My definition of a family film is one that appeals to all the members of the family, including the adults, and under that criteria, Curious George is not a family film. It's a children's film. It tells its story in beautiful visuals with innocence and simplicity, and is deliberately aimed at younger viewers. It doesn't have all sorts of inside jokes and topical references, but it's faithful to the classic children's books, and it has a very special Hello? charm. Anybody in there? Peekaboo. <laughs> Peek-a-boo. <laughs> Peek-a-boo. A-boo. A-boo. Wow, look at that. A monkey who likes to play peekaboo. Curious George, the playful little monkey, doesn't talk, but he communicates in every other possible way. Ted, the man in the yellow hat, is voiced by Will Ferrell. George follows Ted to the city, where Ted hopes to save the museum where he works. He likes a teacher named Maggie, voiced by Drew Barrymore. I know how much you love the museum. I do love the museum, Ted. But that's not really why I go there every week. Yeah, I know. Everyone likes the cafeteria food. Gosh, it's good. I've never had the cafeteria food. Really? Really. Even though they're based on the original drawings in the books, curiously enough, I think Ted and Maggie look a little bit like Jake and Maggie Gyllenhaal. Drew Barrymore and Will Ferrell are just right, though, as the voices going for the direct emotions and clear motives that are appropriate for kids. And I like the sheer wonder of scenes where Ted and George use balloons to float over the city. This isn't the kind of movie I would necessarily choose to see, but then I'm not between kindergarten and middle school. It's rare for a movie to actually be made for smaller kids, and Curious George does a good job of doing that. Hello? Jake and Maggie Gyllenhaal, you know, they're siblings, so that would a whole different subtext well, to this I animation because it's a love story between I can only report what I see. So I, I, would, I would here. beg to defer and say I don't think they look like the Gyllenhaals, but okay. that's fine. Okay. I agree with everything you're saying, and that's why I'm giving it thumbs down. It is a children's movie, and as such, it's sweet, it's innocent, nice little songs mm -hmm. from Jack Johnson. The voice acting is fine. The artwork, I like that it's faithful yeah. to the original, but to tell people my age or someone 25 that they should spend nine or ten bucks to see this movie i can't do it so yeah if you're a parent you're going to take the kids to it definitely if you want to see a sweet movie that's fine this is a semantic argument because yeah, we're saying I mean, exactly the same thing but i'm saying yes this movie succeeds at being a very charming and sweet children's film, and right. you're saying no, adults wouldn't like it. Well, and if well you, I agree with and you. If you and I but were adults, are not supposed to like it. If you and I were on Nickelodeon and paint was being splashed on us mm -hmm. right now, we'd be giving thumbs up to all the little kitties. But I've got to think about our audience in general and say, yeah. you know, okay, well, that's what it, it's. Okay. It's a movie for kids. Okay, I'm going to speak to fun. audience in general. Audience in general, don't go unless you're under the age of ten. How's okay. that? All right. Okay. Our next movie is also about a young girl, and it's troubling and problematical, and yet it undeniably makes a powerful impact. It's named Hard Candy, and it centers on a performance of astonishing focus and power by a 19-year-old playing a 14-year-old, an actress from Nova Scotia named Ellen Page. She plays a young teenager who encounters an older man in a chat room. They meet, they go on a date, they go to his house, and when the man, played by Patrick Wilson, offers her a drink, she handles the situation with commendable caution. What's wrong? Well, they, they teach us young things not to drink anything we haven't mixed ourselves, so... Smart. Come back in the kitchen, I'll pour it again. No. It turns out he should have been the one who was cautious because he got the drugs oh, in his drink. And when he wakes up, so she tells him he has a history of molestation and she plans to teach him a lesson. It's just so easy to blame a kid, isn't it? Just because a girl knows how to imitate a woman does not mean she's ready to do what a woman does. As she accuses the man of pedophilia and murder and horrifies him as she calmly prepares to do what she calls a little preventive maintenance. I doubt a young girl like this could or would do what she does, and the film, while never ever explicitly crossing the line of the R rating, ventures into subject territory some people may find pornographic and a lot of people are going to find very disturbing. What cannot be denied is Ellen Page's performance, and I am very eager to see what she'll do next. There are a lot of movies about men yeah. brutally mistreating women. Maybe it's time for the tables to be turned. Thumbs up with a warning. I think you've got it exactly right. I have to give it thumbs up, even though it was a very unsettling experience. Mm -hmm. And the performances are very strong. Patrick Wilson, you know, is so good here. From the, from the opening scene, Roger, where they're typing back and mm -hmm. forth, it just gives you the chills and the creeps. But yeah. you know stuff like that. Obviously, we read about it in the news. happens mm -hmm. all the time. And yet, halfway through this film, we're actually starting to almost sympathize with a guy who's, at the very least, a creep.
possibly a pedophile, maybe a murderer, because she's so over the top in what she's going to do yeah. to him. But then there's more coming after that. This, so it really takes us on this ride, and it, it is. It's really... It's edgy stuff. This movie is like a textbook argument for the A rating that would mm -hmm. come between R and NC-17. It's for adults only. Absolutely. Everything's going to be fine. Wait. Just, just gonna... relax, son. Take no, it easy. Calm I can't down. do this. I promise you. Yeah. You're fine. Warren, relax. A cure for mutants has been discovered in X-Men, The Last Stand, and the crucial question is, do mutants want to be cured? Mm. This dilemma makes the third X-Men movie fascinating, raising questions that have all sorts of wider implications. The cure is violently opposed by Magneto, played by Ian McKellen, fresh from the Da Vinci Code, who's been the villain of the series, but now we find ourselves agreeing with his opposition. They wish to cure us, but I say to you, we are the cure! Here for that infirm, imperfect condition called Homo sapien. Protests form at clinics where a mutation is cured. Citizens consider guns that could shoot mutants with an antibody that would force them to be cured. And there are parallels with all the real life controversies about genetic engineering. Who would want this cure? I mean, what kind of coward would take it just to fit in? Is it cowardice to save oneself from persecution? Not all of us can fit in so easily. You don't shed on the furniture. Alcatraz is the headquarters for the anti-mutant forces and a prison for a small boy whose presence causes mutants to lose their powers and whose antibodies are the anti-mutant serum. Determined to kill him, Magneto does something amazing with the Golden Gate Bridge. David Copperfield, eat your heart out. <laughs> Familiar X-Men like Wolverine and Storm are joined by some new mutants in X-Men, The Last Stand, including Beast, played by Kelsey Grammer. But the essential conflict is still between Ian McKellen as the rebellious Magneto and Patrick Stewart as Xavier, who believes mutants have an important contribution to make to society. The movie has intriguing ideas, also works as a sensational special effects extravaganza Thumbs up. Thumbs up for me as well. It mm -hmm. does work on both levels. Although with these X-Men movies, Roger, there's always kind of a sliding scale of the powers they have, and mm -hmm. some of them can die and come back to mm -hmm. life. And so that kind of cheats oh, a little bit. Because don't, Let me give you right? a piece of advice. Don't get started on that. Okay. But in I, my first review of <laughs> X-Men, I started talking about how, like, Storm can change the entire climate, right. and yet uh, all Wolverine has are those uh, yeah. uh, fingernails. The finger. I got thousands and thousands of emails going into incredible, <laughs> well, excruciating detail yeah, but, about all of the things yeah. that I didn't know about And that's the great for, for people who have read all of the X-Men files and all of the uh, comic books and go online all the time, but for those of us who just want to see the movie, it does sometimes cheat a little bit because it seems like some characters can die and come yeah. back, other ones really die. Uh -huh. But it does raise really good, interesting questions, and then you just got that neato stuff where yeah. they can move the Golden Gate Bridge and you know you don't want to question it too much I still say hands down Halle Berry Storm would seem to be able to trump guys with blue fur yeah. or humans with guns or anything because she can control the weather when you control the weather you control well, the world. Of course, when you have the power of a, of a supernova in your fingertips, that's kind of good, too. There's that scene yeah. where the water guy and the fire guy fight it out. That's Plus, great. she's hot. So there's that, too. Hey, there's that, too. That was Frankie and Johnny And that's the end of my song She put a hose in his tailpipe Cause he had done her wrong He was her man And that's all she wrote Garrison Keillor's beloved A Prairie Home Companion comes to the big screen with some A-list stars in some key roles. I'm Richard Roper. And I'm Roger Ebert. Robert Altman's new film, A Prairie Home Companion, is a movie you want to cuddle it so funny and sweet and so perfectly in the spirit of Garrison Keillor's great radio program. Keillor plays himself as the laid-back host of the program that's going off the air after one last broadcast. He refuses to get sentimental about it, but everyone else does. Backstage, Meryl Streep plays a singer who hopes her daughter, played by Lindsay Lohan, can appear on the farewell show. I would just like there to be a spot for Lola on the show later. Hope so. There's time. Well, this isn't really going to be your last show, is it? Every show's your last show. That's my philosophy. Thank you, Plato. 
And we've also got John C. Riley and Woody Harrelson trying to one-up each other with cornball jokes. And Streep has a great comic duet with Lily Tomlin in the movie. She was diagnosed hypoglycemic, and so she forgets she didn't pay for the donut, and she walks out the door. Was it two minutes? For shop. The red lights are flashing, and she's in handcuffs. Yep, she was and the cameras, the TV camera, oh, the station came the right news. down. It's on the news. And her hair's like sticking out like this she and she's bawling. And daddy sees it on the 10 o'clock newscast. He... Kevin Klein plays the private eye Guy Noir, who is a character on the radio show, but here moves into the same world as the others, as the man in charge of security. You are fat. You, you, you might think about cutting down on the uh, desserts and the beer and uh, also possibly sex with men. Tommy Lee Jones is the man who's bought the theater and is going to tear it down and put up a parking lot. Virginia Madsen is angelic as his mysterious visitor. I used to listen to this show every week. Well, it was greater than its time, but the time's up. Life moves on. It does. So be careful driving tonight. You need to live somewhere? There's a shortcut to the airport. A steep hill followed by a series of sharp curves and a large oak tree. I felt good during this movie from the beginning to the end. It was as warm and embracing as the radio show itself, and yet it was something more. There's a sense of elegy in the film, a sense that something wonderful is coming to an end, and the way to handle that is not to regret it, but to treasure the memories. The program's actual sound man and house band play themselves, and Keeler drives everyone crazy by being so casual he can barely make it to the microphone. <laughs> And the music and the jokes all work, and the timing between Tomlin and Streep is awesome. Thumbs way up. Well, good for you. I'm glad you're going to enjoy your cuddling with this movie. I'm giving it thumbs down. You're not. I do think, you're and I this do. Movie thumbs. Down. I am giving this movie thumbs down. I'm going to tell you why. Appearance. You have the appearance of a human being. But in <laughs> fact, you are an android. Well, you're you're the one cuddling with a movie. Um, I think it has a lot of spirit and style. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with my, my thumbs down, Rogers, to do with the fact that I'm not a fan of a Prairie Home Companion. Oh, wow. um, I've always found it to be a little, a little smug, a little elitist. And you talk about the jokes and the music. Either you like that brand of music and humor, or you don't. Well, I I'm not a huge jokes fan. All the time. You do. I'm here for them. And I think if, if you haven't noticed for the last six years, um, you know, I often leave the room when you get to your third or fourth joke. Real uh, awesome. You know, Garrison Keillor does a lot of that. You know, this show is brought to you by Johnson Shoe Polish. It's polish for your shoes. I, I mean, like and you either stuff. like that or you I don't. I like it. And there must be about thirty songs in this movie. Yeah. I don't. I don't find them that entertaining. How about Red River Valley? How about it? You're not going to get a better song than that. It's not, it's, it's not for me. I don't enjoy that kind of music. I don't enjoy well, that kind of I humor. Say is Performances are very good. And I will say this. Somebody like Lindsay Lohan, we just saw her in a horrible comedy called mm -hmm. Just My Luck mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. She's wonderful well, here Well, I'm going to say this. Role. There are people who love the radio show. Of course. And millions. Probably, and they thought millions. this movie was going to screw it up. It doesn't. No. Well, if you love the, Keeler wrote the movie. You know. If you love the radio show, you're going to love the movie. Yes. And I think it's very much an Altman movie as well as a Prairie Home Companion movie. I like the Altman part of the equation more than the Prairie Home Companion part of the equation. Let's move on. An android. Right. You're an android. Well